In uh, today's lecture, I'm going to talk about one of um, different various types of direct energy conversion, which is called the thermoacoustic method. Uh, as it's obvious from the title of this method, uh, the thermoacoustic device is a connection between the thermal energy or something referring to a temperature difference between two reservoirs and also the acoustic power which is related to the propagation of sound um, with the velocity of sound in a gas. So if you convert the thermal energy to the acoustic power it is a type of direct energy conversion or DEC which is called thermoacoustics. So in this case we are dealing with sound waves. Sound waves are kind of wave which the pressure and the density and the temperature of a compressible gas varies along the, these waves. They are propagating in gases something like air with the velocity of sound. So the basic concept is to convert the electrical energy to the heat to the pump to the heat which is pumped from a hot uh, so the basic concept here is to so the basic concept here is to convert the temperature difference or the thermal energy injected to the system in the form of temperature difference to the electrical energy the output electrical energy this process from down to top is called the heat engine or the prime mover. The other or the reverse process is to convert the elect or to use the electrical energy to pump heat from a cold re reservoir to the hot reservoir, which is called the refrigerator or the heat pump. So uh, these uh, such systems. Uh, have no moving parts. This is the general characteristic of any direct energy conversion method. But instead, the ratio of output power and uh, the volume is uh, low. They generally, I mean the DEC devices generally have low efficiencies, but high reliabilities, low uh, setup costs and maintain maintenance costs and uh, also simple structure. Uh, these devices uh, can be used in different applications of energy harvesting which is related to the harnessing of energy from waste energies. Something similar to uh, a um, small bit of thermal energy in our case which can generate sound. So here, going from top to bottom, which is a heat pump, we have uh, electricity and we use that electricity to generate high amplitude sound waves uh, using a speaker. Uh, along these sound waves, we have temperature density and pressure variations in a sound wave. This is called the acoustic power, so the elect uh, speaker converts the electricity or the electrical power to the acoustic power. Then using a, a thermoacoustic refrigerator or heat pump, we can convert these uh, temperature the difference or temperature gradient to the heat transfer from the cold reservoir towards the hot reservoir. In a reverse manner, we have a source of thermal power and using the thermoacoustic uh, heat engine, we can generate uh, acoustic waves which contain the mechanical energy in the form of acoustic power. And using a um, secondary device such as a microphone, we can convert these acoustic powers to the electrical uh, output. As you see, this one is the engine or the primer mover, uh, the prime mover version, and the right one is the refrigerator. We have a resonator. Resonator is a device which combines the two left running and right running waves to generate a standing wave. A standing wave is a type of wave which the amplitude of that wave is just a 
function of position. But the other version of the thermoacoustic um, device is uh, the version which operates um, you based on the traveling waves. Uh, the, the standing type, standing wave type of the thermoacoustic engine uses the Brighton cycle. Um, and this is the geometry of uh, such devices. This is a resonator. Uh, this is the engine and we have two reservoirs hot uh, temperature and the cold temperature. This is the stack a Heat is injected to the engine and also extracted from the cold side and the result of this process is the generation of sound wave which can be converted to the power But here in, in the refrigerator version we have a speaker here Power is uh, delivered to the speaker and the speaker generates the acoustic waves. These acoustic waves uh, generate pump the heat from the cold reservoir towards the hot reservoir using heat exchangers. This is the, the schematic uh, drawing of a refrigerator or the prime mover using the Brighton cycle for uh, standing waves. The other version for traveling wave uh, uses the Stirling cycle to generate power and the instead of stack that version of the device contains a regenerator. Okay let's uh, discuss the thermodynamic cycle inside the stack which leads uh, to the Pump, uh, pumping of heat from the cold side to the hot side or leads to the generation of acoustic wave. Here we have this one is, uh, uh, this one demonstrates the refrigerator. Uh, here we have a hot side and this one is the cold side and we have a sound wave just inside the stack. Now, as you know, the Brighton cycle uh, contains four sides, four steps. Two of them are expanding and uh, compression and expansion of the gas uh, isen in an isentropic manner. So here we have a uh, gas which um, the process is completely adiabatic and since the sound wave is a very small uh, wave so the thermodynamic pr process which contains sound waves uh, can be regarded as isentropic. The stronger version of this sound wave is called the shock wave, which is completely a different topic and uh, out of scope of this video. But here, since the sound wave is very weak, so we can consider it to be isentropic and reversible and adiabatic. So here inside the stack, we have a, a sound wave in a gas. And near the hot uh, side of the stack, the ga gas experiences a uh, compression. This compression leads to the increase of pressure and temperature in this region near the hot uh, side. Uh, so if the, we want to design a um, refrigerator, the increase of the temperature in the gas near the hot reserve here should be in a way that the temperature of the gas becomes greater than the temperature of the uh, hot reservoir so the heat will flow from the gas towards the hot reservoir this is exactly what we want in a refrigerator in a heat pump and uh, so we have uh, an isentropic compression and then the heat transfer to the hot reservoir in a, at a constant pressure uh, the next step is isentropic expansion which leads to the decrease of the temperature and pressure of the gas so the device should be designed in a way that the uh, that the temperature of the gas after this expansion becomes uh, smaller than the temperature of the cold side so the flow from the cold reservoir toward the gas. This um, parcel here, the red parcel, the circle here, is, um, is the heat. So um, the, this is the motion of the expansion and successive expansion and compression of the wave inside the stack. Successive compression and expansion conveys 
heat from the cold reservoir toward the hot reservoir. Uh, the thermodynamic process for an engine is exactly the reverse process but consider that uh, again we have two compression and expansions uh, which are both isentropic but this time when the gas experiences a compression here near the hot wall and the temperature of the gas uh, increases this increase should be so that the temperature of the hot reservoir remains higher than the temperature of the gas adjacent to the hot reservoir. So the, this time the heat transfer will occur from the hot reservoir towards the gas. So the gas will convey the heat from the hot reservoir towards the cold side of the stack. And after the expansion, the reduction of temperature uh, in the gas near the cold side should be in a way that the temperature of the gas here um, becomes um, uh, higher than the temperature of the cold reservoir so this time the heat uh, will fr flow from the gas towards the cold reservoir and this process will um, lead to the generation of a sound wave inside the gas which the power of this, this uh, sound wave can be converted to the mechanical energy or the electrical energy and this is uh, the thermoacoustic heat engine or the heat thermoacoustic um, prime mover okay here we have the uh, a diagram which demonstrates the variation of temperature inside a thermoacoustic heat engine the length of the engine is L and the stack is placed just at the position L over 4. Here you see that the temperature of the stack is greater than the temperature of the gas. This is the compression part of the uh, Brighton cycle which is shown here. So we, the gas, uh, after compression of the gas, the temperature increases, but in the, this version, the temperature of the gas remains lower than the temperature of the stack. So the heat uh, flows from the stack toward the gas. And uh, here, the, this is the expansion part, which leads to the decrease of the temperature of the gas. But again, here, the temperature of the stack is smaller than the temperature of the gas uh, so they'll be extracted from the gas toward the um, cold reservoir this is uh, q out and this one is the input heat transfer so we have an oscillating temperature inside the gas and also an oscillating temperature inside the stack and the amplitude of the oscillation of the stack's temperature should be which is T sub S here, which should be greater than the amplitude of oscillation of the gas at the position which stack is placed. If the the, um, the amplitudes, uh, be, if the amplitudes are identical, this means that uh, we have no uh, heat transfer between the gas and the stack. This is just the critical condition, which can be shown to be equal to this relation. And finally, the uh, the, if the efficiency of such devices can be defined as the uh, this uh, this is the efficiency of uh, here the thermoacoustic heat engine. This is the efficiency of the Carnot process, and this ratio shows the temperature. The, 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 the numerator is the critical temperature difference, and the denominator is the uh, temperature difference between uh, two hot and cold reservoirs. Uh, if the device operates as a heat pump or a refrigerator, the COP, coefficient of performance of the device, is the, the, the product of I. So this uh, ratio is 1 over I. So the product of I and the COP of the kernel cycle.